Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Data Management and Visualization with Tableau. Uh, we have our guest speaker with us today, Sarah Ann Murphy from Ohio State University. I'd like to highlight that this is uh, the first of uh, four sessions we have on uh, uh, data management and visualization with Tableau. Uh, the next one is on March 10 with Jeremy Bueller from the University of British Columbia, and on March 17 with Rachel Llewellyn from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And all three of them will be recorded and made available on the YouTube channel. And then we will have a discussion session with all of them on April 21st. I am Martha Kirilidou, and I work here at ARL at the Statistics and Service Quality Programs. And uh, one of the reasons we are interested in this topic is because as this quote from the IBM website says, every day we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data, so much that 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years alone. This data comes from everywhere, sensors used to gather climate information, posts to social media sites, digital pictures and videos, purchase transaction records, and cell phones, to name a few. And this data is big data. Now, in our libraries, we also have a lot of data. And we have started using tools uh, that are uh, known as business, business intelligence and analytics platforms. And this slide presents uh, the findings from the latest uh, uh, Gartner report. Um, and I recommend that you take a good look at it. The, you, you will see in the top quadrant to the right the leaders in this field as, as are being identified, including their um, products like SaaS and IBM and uh, Microsoft and Oracle. Uh, but Tableau, you will notice, has a very um, high score on the ability to execute, the ability to deploy uh, quickly. And uh, we will see some wonderful examples from our colleagues in the libraries. Uh, so the gold standard um, in, in this um, area, according to this report, is Tableau, and that's why we are uh, focusing on that. So without any further delay, Sara, the floor is yours. Thank you, Martha. Um, first, I'm very happy to be with you today to talk about Tableau. It's one of my favorite things to talk about these days. I have been a enthusiastic Tableau user now for about two and a half years. I started using it, I started with a trial in June of 2012, and I found Tableau through, through a book actually, through Stephen Few's Now You See It, Simple Visualization Techniques for Quantitative Analysis. Um, he used um, visualizations from a number of different data visualization products, but the ones that I um, was most drawn to and resonated the most with were the Tableau visualizations. So I stumbled around and played with Tableau, and I haven't turned back. So just a moment here. There we go. OK. So wh why the interest in data visualization? Why, why can it be benefit of, of benefit to your library? Um, well, first. Uh, great visualizations help your library to be more efficient. They help your library to process very large quantities of data very quickly. And um, also, uh, they also help groups to ask questions and to drill into your data um, without much delay and uh, discover um, insights about problems, the nature of problems, and new understandings. Uh, they also help groups to create a shared view of a situation and figure out um, some ways to move forward. But why Tableau? I've been getting this question often from some others in the field who are interested in deploying Tableau at their institution or, um, or learning more about the product. Um, what's really neat about Tableau is that you do not need to be a business analyst. You do not need to be a technical expert to query your data and use it. 
If you're using Tableau, you can gather and analyze data in essentially real time. Um, you can share your data um, with others, and um, and this is data that you know resides in servers and often messy ways. You can blend data from different data sets together, and Tableau can help your organization support a, like a culture of assessment and data-informed decision making. So why Tableau? Not, why not Excel? Why not Access? And um, I've really been struggling with answering this question for others, um, but um, I did find in a couple of readings that I've done, I think Phil Simon is one of them, um, that you know it's it's not apples to apples. It really is. You have to select the appropriate tool for your situation and what you're doing. Um, Excel might be perfectly acceptable for a, the project at hand. Um, access might be acceptable. Uh, it just depends on what you're doing. Um, but still, um, you know, I like this quote. I, I, I laugh when I see it. Um, in terms of generating useful multi-dimensional visual analysis, it's like going from an Etch-a-Sketch to industrial light and magic. Um, and that's pretty true because um, one of Tableau's inventors um, has an Oscar because he worked for Pixar. So anyway, um, I thought today that I would uh, share some visualizations I've done here at Ohio State um, based on the role of the visualization, its intention, its purpose. Um, and um, I've embedded in at the top of each slide a website that you can go to so that you can play with the visualizations either now or later. Um, because um, the bulk of their value is their interactivity. Um, so a PowerPoint cannot do it justice. So um, I'll just start, though, with this, um, visual, this visualization right here. This is um, at go.osu.edu ARL statistics. And um, this is um, a comparison of OSU's ARL rank to member CIC, member CIC institutions, which for our organization is of interest for benchmarking purposes. And um, I plotted out the, the ARL index um, for this time period on um, box plots. And right now, Ohio State is highlighted. Um, so this means if you use a high, there's a little highlight tool over here. And if you click on the highlight tool, um, you can then go click on Ohio State, and it will highlight all of OSU's data. This is Michigan way up here, lucky Michigan. Um, but um, that's um, really useful when you are uh, giving a presentation to gray out all the other data and focus on your own. Um, OSU has different benchmark institutions, so we can see the same graph if we click here on for benchmark institutions, double click here. Um, it, it will just all repopulate with the benchmark institution names and all of the data over here on the right will change. This visual right here is on our library's gate count and um, it collects, OSU has I think 10 or 12 different library or, um, locations on the Columbus campus. So this just gathers the daily gate count from each location and aggregates all of that data here in three different ways. So um, two different ways, sorry. So here we have just the trend line over time from uh, 2013 to um, December 31st, 2014. We have a trend line um, which Tableau added for me. Um, and if you roll over this on the visualization, it will give you a uh, the, the regression calculation and the p-value, so you can see if that this trend is is a valid trend or not. Um, and then it also breaks the data down by library location by quarter. Um, and they have filters over here on the right that says that the gate count goes back to 2013. It actually truly goes back to 2002. Um, so you can change the time period and make it larger if you want. All of these are little different widgets so that if um, you were doing a presentation for um, a different constituency group, uh, I, I could um, cut and paste this. You could cut and paste this out and put it into your presentation. And um, so it's just 
some nice things. You can also filter by the library location. So hang on here, I'm getting used to ReadyTalk. So right here, there's a quick filter. So there's a pull down menu. So this whole graph is reset for the 18th Avenue library location. And this way you can see if the trend line has changed uh, for that location. This next dashboard is our live answers data back to 2011. And um, uh, we have our reference questions separated out by directional questions, basic reference questions, which Ohio State views as inventory control type questions. Can you look up a book in the catalog for me? And then research consultations. And you notice we have this huge peak up here, and it's been going down, down, down. And that's in the purple. That's for the um, directional questions. And um, back in 2009, the Thompson Library opened in a new location. And so many of these questions were, where's the bathroom? So that has changed. But we also have highlight actions on this dashboard. And all of the elements of this dashboard are linked together. So if I highlight the action on research consultation, it highlights the text table, it highlights the research consultation bar graph by quarter and year. Um, and this is called a multi-pane graph down here. Um, and it also highlights the research consultations in the trend chart. And what's interesting here is that this trend has been going up since 2011. And that is good for our libraries, because we've been making a conscious effort um, to uh, rebrand ourselves and um, create engaged librarians. And so we're trying to. Um, promote that program and that service. On the right down here, we also have a heat map. And this is a filter action in Tableau. So if I click on heat map, this takes me to a new dashboard. And this looks at um, the questions that have come in by hour, by year. So it's a multi-plane graph again. And um, here are the hours. And then by semester, so winter, semester, spring, summer, fall. Um, and uh, you notice when you get to 2013, it's just spring, May, summer, fall. And that's because in 2012, Ohio State went from quarters to semesters. Um, but when we look at the data this way, we have filters on the bottom. And with these filters, whoops, let me go back. I jumped ahead of myself. With these filters, um, because OSU switched from quarters to semesters just recently, it's sometimes helpful to look at the week in the year. So we could look at the 34th week in the year, which is um, typically the start of um, fall semester when uh, on the semester system. And we could look at the, I think it's the 38th week of the year, is the typical start of fall quarter. And that way, then you can see how reference tra um, desk transactions have evolved by hour, by day um, in those two time periods. You can also look at the type of question, the format of the question, um, the day of the week, if you want to. So, And all of this data, this is um, coming from three different systems right now, um, because previously we had um, different software that was handling our research um, and consultations and reference transaction recording. So we're blending data from three different sources right now to um, create this output. Um, so this 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 uh, visual is quite recent. Uh, I was learning how to do hidden um, worksheets on dashboards and um, was um, involved with the library's diversity programming. And so we were trying to find a way to promote the library's collections as well as the program. And um, the topic for this diversity lecture was related to human trafficking. So we mined our library's catalog for subject headings um, related to human trafficking and child trafficking. And it kind of then threw it into this word cloud, uh, all of the subject headings for those records um, that had those two subject headings in, the, in, in them. And then um, this is um, a uh, set up with actions that if you click on a word in the word cloud, um, so if I clicked on women, women's rights, for example, and then I, um, it will open up a list of the titles um, related to women's rights. And then it will, um, just, so that's the hidden table. And then if I click on a title, um, it takes me directly to the library's catalog, and I can um, access the um, uh, 
since this is an electronic resource, I can access it here. So a couple more um, dashboards as we have time that I have here. Hang on a second. Um, I have some dashboards that uh, bring together some operational data related to our Iliad borrowing and our special collections. And um, I also have uh, one that if we have time, I don't know, um, but I can share the website that you can go to where you can look at the um, whole Thompson Library here at OSU and find the location of a book on a shelf. It still has some quirks. It's a work in progress, but it can be done. So um, here we go. Um, so here is the, whoops, went too far. Uh, here is uh, the Iliad dashboard. Um, so this right now, is, it's a kind of a proof of concept. We don't really have it in, in use yet here at OSU. But it's taking our Iliad um, transactional data for borrowing, and it's mashing it together with um, some data that was um, extracted from the university's HR system and their student information system. Because right now, OSU's um, departments for users in Iliad are not the same as the departments that the um, university assigns to majors or, um, or um, what else? Well, they don't. My, my point is, is that they do not blend nicely or play nicely, and then um, they don't blend well with the the subject areas that we have assigned to our librarians. So um, this takes um, and looks at all of the subject. This particular visualization is looking at all of the subjects um, that are assigned to our liaison, David Linkove, and it shows that history is the major for for his particular portfolio, history is the major user, and it just kind of gets, these are like little spark lines that show that there's an ebb and flow over the year of requests. Um, but it shows the breakdown of articles versus books, but you can actually get to a list of the titles that were scanned by clicking on this link or the list of the titles that were um, borrowed. So the title scan would be like the document delivery. The titles borrowed would be the physical book. And so if he clicks on those, he gets to this list right here, and it shows it's broken down by user department. There's some filters that we can't see right now that are over on the side, so he can filter by groups of years um, to see, um, uh, you know, some trends uh, of when the, you know the currency of what is being borrowed, etc. We have another slide here. There we go. Um, so this data has been blended from Iliad, Sierra, and other sources. Our librarians are assigned to the user department, but we have found that the user department is not a good surrogate for interdisciplinary research areas. So we have a second um, dashboard, which um, I don't have time to uh, Yeah, I don't think I put in today. But this dashboard um, looks at um, it looks at Iliad borrowing by language, and that helps for like our Jewish studies area, where we have uh, a program here at Ohio State, but it's um, a program supported by faculty from multiple departments. And uh, Sarah, what's Sierra? What system is Sierra? Uh, that's our triple I, our triple I um, innovative catalog Thank system. You. Okay. So this visual right here, this is another proof of concept. Um, I'm calling it our OSU Special Collections Deflected Titles List. And I've been trying to um, embed more context in dashboards. So it talks about how um, interlibrary loan algorithms automatically deflect requests for items in our library special collections. So our librarians and in our interlibrary loan office never see these requests. But our um, special collections librarians have indicated that they would like to see what we are um, the, the requests that are being denied to help inform our digitization priorities. So we, there is a way to query this information out of um, Iliad. And we've taken this information and we've mashed it together with our library's um, Google pick list. And then we've told Tableau to only show us items that are not on the Google pick list. And so right now, if I collect a, a, select a collection like our cartoon library and museum, um, it shows that in, in the time period, I think it was fiscal year 14, our libraries deflected 413 interlibrary loan requests for this collection. 
and 398 of these were not available in Google Books, so they're candidates for digitization. And so if they click here on the purple, it will take them to the, the list of those titles. And then lastly, um, we've been just starting to play around with service profiles for our subject librarians, and this is going to um, change. It's it's really just throwing some ideas right now. It, it's not informing anything. But we're trying to um, see um, uh, like the distribution of our workload across um, all different departments at OSU. And so over here on the left, um, we just have the basic faculty FTE by college here at OSU. And then we can look at the um, colleges assigned to the librarians and see how many um, faculty FTE are in the portfolio for an individual librarian. Um, so uh, this is a work in progress, and it's not, uh, again, I want to emphasize it's not informing any decisions right now. We're just playing with it. Um, but um, one thing that it's helpful is to look at um, these profiles and groups, so looking at arts and humanities as a separate group to look at um, other indicators and how are they, um, the, the, you know, the number of students and faculty within that um, are served by one individual library liaison. So it is 2.25, and I wanted to be sure I left time for questions. So um, I can bring certain um, dashboards up and show you them directly on Tableau right now. Or um, it, again, I did put the um, URLs at the top of every slide. so. Um, that you, you can have that and you can look at them after the webinar today if you'd like to spend some more time with some of these visuals. Not all of them are available because not all of them are public information, but some of them are. So, Lisa Horowitz is asking if you can show some of the back end. Yes. Okay. Hang on a minute. Let me remember how to use ReadyTalk. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to share my desktop. That's fine. Okay, can you see my desktop? Yes. All right. I opened my Tableau file. Let me just go start with a simple one. Let's start with the human trafficking. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So here is the dashboard. And so again, if I click on human rights, it opens all of the titles that are related to that particular um, subject heading. And if I click on Anthropological Approaches to Gender-Based Violence, it's going to send me waiver over to pretty fast to the subject, the, um, I'm sorry, the catalog record. But the nuts and bolts, all of these are just little widgets. So if I go to the worksheet, it's just a word cloud. And we have dragged the um, subject onto the text field. Um, if I change this, this is what it really looks like when you first start. If I go back to automatic, it looks, it's called a tree map. But if you take a tree map and you turn it to text, it turns into a word cloud. And then the other part of this dashboard here is just a simple text table. Go to sheet. What I really like about Tableau is this show me box over here on the right. It, see these, um, some of these, um, it grays out all of the visuals that are not appropriate for the data, the, the dimensions and the measures that you have selected. And so right here it's just saying for, the, for what I've selected against you would be appropriate or a text table. Um, so that's really, I like that feature. It saves me a lot of time. Um, let's see if I just open the new sheet. I don't oh, know you're opening. There is a question about um, whether you are building those or whether they are um, already turnkey. Clearly, you are building oh, these, but very easily, it looks very like. Very easily. Right? I'm getting there. So um, right now, I'm working with an extracted data set because it um, because this is I had to package this to share it with you. But um, let's see. These are um, the fields that I, um, so I have four different data sets that I'm pulling together here. And so I think I just, 
excuse me, it's been a while since I um, put this together, but like here, I have the subjects, and I can say, just give me a count of the number of records for those individual subjects. And then I go to show me, make that a tree map, turn that into a word cloud, and then you just have to clean up some of the formatting. So it's a um, drag and drop. Now there is a little bit of a learning curve, um, but Tableau does provide a lot of really good training videos on their website. And um, yes, so I can overwhelm you very easily. Yeah. <laughs> a couple more questions yes. uh, here. Um, Steve Healer is asking, how difficult was it to clean up and blend the data you used from Liebanzers? and your other consultation database into Tableau, and who did the cleaning up work? Um, you know, it really just depends on the project. Let's see, live answers. I did that one a while ago. Um, I think for live answers, I did a lot of the cleanup the hard way in um, Excel, and it was a lot of matching fields and getting fields in the right column in just one giant Excel spreadsheet. But um, other times I clean up data by, um, like whenever I put uh, library catalog data together, I um, take it, I, I, the, our, our library catalog, I don't have the ability right now to write a direct SQL query onto our library catalog. I wish I did. So um, sometimes I get um, really messy data out of our, our search system to extract the data from that system. And so um, rather than spending a lot of time um, cleaning the data and, and matching everything up, I will only extract like two fields at a time. So usually something like a unique number, like the bib record number, and then like subject headings. And then I uh, will use um, some techniques in um, Excel to clean the data. Other times I don't need to clean the data. I can um, match it up in Tableau. Tableau has some nice features so that I can come in here and like um, like this subject rod here, I can create groups and sets. And so I can do some data cleaning here and saying I only want abuse together as, an, as one idea, and then I'll just call it abuse and say OK. And then it will make another um, field right here that has those named groups. So that's really a, a useful feature. I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want it, though. Um, let me get out of this. Let me. I don't want to save. Um, let's see. Hang on a minute. I don't know where I put things. Yeah, and there is Jason uh, Mitchell is asking once you've created a visualization, how are you able to share that visualization? Is that shared visualization interactive or just a flat image? Um, it's, it, it is interactive. But it is interactive, mm -hmm. and there's a couple different ways. Um, if it's public data um, and not sensitive, I can create what's called a package workbook in Tableau, and I can upload it to my Tableau public space, and then it can be um, embedded in websites. So for instance, um, one of the visuals I showed you today is actually embedded in our assessment department's page. I think it's right here. I've got to clean that up. Right here. Yep. So this is um, the when you create a Tableau workbook, it gives you the code, and you can embed it in a, work, in a, in a website. So I can click on here, and, and what it's really doing is taking me to the CIC comparison page. So that's right here. And I can change this pretty quickly to the benchmark institution right there. So here's the highlighting pitch, um feature I was showing. So if I click the highlighter and then click Ohio State, I can look at Ohio State. If I hold down my shift key, I can look at Ohio State and Michigan. And it just shows Michigan, just shows Ohio State. See how this text is opening. Um, I can edit. Those are called tooltips. So I can edit them to say um, whatever I want it to say. So for instance, let me, let's see, hopefully my memory will work, serve me well here. Um, Thompson, Thompson, I think it's Thompson Books. No, okay. Well, um, hang on a minute. I think.
think I have another way of getting there. Um, actually, I know what I can do. I can dub Tableau. Here we go. I know what to do. Excuse me here. Um, so I have a little blog. Um, it's at u.osu.edu slash murphy.465. And if you click right here on the lib library viz at OSU, it takes you directly to my Tableau public page. It's easier to explain how to get there that way. And so if you come down here to, here it is. This was what I was looking for. This is what I, this was the fun one that I was talking about where you, you can map where your book is in the library. So it's not perfect. It has some quirks, but like um, if I looked for B125.C4, which is the first example, it's going to find it up here. It, see, it's not perfect. It finds all of those. I think I have to put it in quotes. But um, this book, um, The Humanist Way in Ancient China, um, so basically I've taken a tool tip and I've just, this is insert the title field, insert the call number is located in, um, this is joining a couple different um, data sets together to create this. And everything is interactive. You can even click here to get to information about the title and the library catalog, which is not there. Oh, there it is. There it is. So lots of different things you can do. Sky's the limit. And where is the data stored, Karen Ticone is asking? Which data? For this? Yes, and yeah. Well, because this one is Tableau Public, it's been uploaded to the Tableau server. So I, I lost track of the question. So um, this is one way of sharing the data. Um, another way for data that is of a more sensitive nature. Um, so what I was showing you in Tableau was the um, kind of the production side. So this, this is um, a good analogy would be like Adobe Acrobat. So if you have a, the production side of Adobe Acrobat, you can edit PDFs, you can create forms, all this other stuff. Um, and then I can come up here and save it as a export whatever I've made into a packaged workbook. Once it's a packaged workbook, it cannot be edited. And um, the data, you're only going to see the aggregate of the data for the worksheets. Um, and um, then I can store that packaged workbook um, in a central place. So I could store it in a shared server space here at OSU. And then others in our organization who do not have Tableau can download the free Tableau reader and open their packaged workbook using the reader. And the functionality is just a little bit different. It looks a little bit different. But they are able to use the filters. They are able to see what I can see. They just can't um, change like the fields that I've put together. Mm -hmm. They can't change the formulas, the calculations, things like that. So. Yep. And do you what which um do you use only Tableau Public? Do you use a couple of different versions of it? Um, right now, I think I'm using Tableau eight point two. So this right here is the Tableau Professional. This is Tableau mm -hmm. Professional, Desktop mm -hmm. Professional, not Desktop mm -hmm. Personal, but the Desktop Professional. So this is um, one step up, and this allows me to connect to all these different, um, this one I'm using on my Mac, it's a little, it looks a little different on my PC, but I can connect to all these different kinds of data sources. Um, and usually on my PC it would say down here, it would say um, ODBC, and I could connect right there to an OB, ODBC, but not, not right now on my Mac. Um, usually I just connect to a, a Tableau data extract because if you work directly on a server, it takes it's it's just too slow. So it's better to, I find it's easier to extract the data. And you can set a data extract to um, extract every Friday at 4 a.m. if need be, and it will refresh your extract. Um, so that's my preference. Um, but I haven't, um, a disclaimer here is that I haven't um, done that with a file yet. I'd like to. Um, you can also connect directly to an access. Um, I don't have access on my machine, so I think that's why it's not showing up. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, you can connect directly to Google Analytics through here if you want to. Um, lots of different options. And uh, there is a question about how does it connect to the ILS system, but I believe you said you don't 
you cannot do direct uh, right CSQL queries. Right now, I'm not queries. able to. I suspect yeah. that this Postgres SQL is how, but um, I understand that I need some kind of connector, so mm -hmm. I haven't been able to do it yet. But you've been doing a lot of wonderful things, and very quickly. Um, and uh, thank you to you and to all the people who are asking questions. There are a couple of questions we haven't addressed today, but I'm going to write them down, and we're going to have uh, the fourth session of this series. It's just going to be Q&A, and we're going to have uh, uh, Sarah again with us. Um, thank you, Sarah. No, thank you. So if you are using Tableau and um, other analytics uh, platforms, uh, please join the ARL-assess at ARL.org. It's a Google group. And post examples there, and let's keep the discussion and the sharing going. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.